Hey, good morning guys, it's Sabrina. And yesterday I did a couple of videos. The first one I posted, and it is about speaking into someone's life with depression and, and really can be applied to speaking into someone's life regarding anything that's going on. Um, I really recommend you watch that and, and share that with people because oftentimes I've seen people say, well, I'm doing it in love. But really, what, what is the motivation behind that? I really want to challenge you to cross-examine yourself uh, before you speak into someone's life to make sure that the reason you're doing it is for love, out of love, and that you sincerely and genuinely want to help. And if that's the case, then follow along with me on this video. I'm going to give you some things about what not to say and do and some things that I can recommend saying and doing that will help them along this journey, okay? Um, speaking from personal experience, things I've heard and been told, uh, things that have helped me, things that have hurt me and things that I've read up on that have been said and done to other people. Um, so here we go. The first thing is don't question someone in a way that can be um, undermining what they're going through. In other words, someone's battling depression. And I have another video on this talking about what normal depression looks like, which is the atypical depression. Someone like me who comes across um, happy or very task oriented and driven and all that and honestly it's very frustrating when i'm dealing with those kinds of things and i try to share with someone like you but you have everything you've you seem so put together you per you can't be struggling with depression you yeah me and saying that to somebody who's struggling with depression it really it questions and it invalidates what they're going through and so don't do that don't do that instead do this wow i didn't realize that you dealt with something like that i didn't realize that i i am so sorry or not even i'm sorry just wow that's i didn't really realize that and so instead of automatically assuming that they're lying to you or making excuses or um not dealing with what they say they're dealing with be supportive be be just kind and if you don't understand it just say that and that's okay the second thing, don't look at someone that's struggling with depression and say, well, you just have to try harder. Just try harder. Just pull up your bootstraps. Just think on the positive, focus on the positive and, and, you know, just try harder to be happy. Do you really think someone struggling with depression isn't trying hard to be better? They aren't focusing on the good. They aren't trying to focus on the positive things. They aren't pulling up their own bootstraps. As a matter of fact, I'll be completely honest. One of the, the traits of perfectly hidden depression is to focus on the good things. You count your blessings, so to speak. I'll give you an example. Um, when I'm feeling really down, which, you know, kind of comes in, in swells. Um, one of the things that I tend to do for myself is I beat myself up for feeling depressed. I will say things to myself like, well, at least I'm not, you know, over in a, in a Middle Eastern country being sold into sex trafficking. At least I'm not a five-year-old girl going through, you know, horrific things over there. At least I'm not starving and dying under a bridge. At least my children are healthy. Uh, we're not losing them to malnutrition over in Africa. Those are pretty extremes, but that's what I do to try to beat myself up for feeling depressed. I count my blessings. Um, I try harder to feel happy. I compensate with humor and uh, comedy to try to make other people feel better in a way to make myself feel better. So telling someone to try harder, it really puts it off as if they're not doing a good enough job and that it's all on them, that it's just their inability to do better. And that, that doesn't help anyone with depression to feel better. It's actually adding to the burden of not being able to feel better. So don't do that. Instead, say things like, you know, I'm here for you. Just tell them, I love you. I don't understand what you're going through, but I'm here for you if you need me. Um, encourage them. I believe in you. I, I understand you're going through a difficult time right now, or um, I understand you're hurting. What can I do for you? Those are better things to say that help validate their feelings and validate what they're going through and not demoralizing them for not being able to try harder and pick themselves up. The best thing that you can do for me or anybody else struggling with depression is just be there. Be a support system. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that you care, that you're just there, okay? 
Don't tell them to have more faith. You just have to pray about it. You just have to trust God and it'll all be okay. Well, as I said in my very first video, I do pray about it. I do trust God. And I have been trying to have more faith. And sometimes I'm still not okay. And that's just the matter of depression. Um, telling someone to have more faith or just pray and trust God, it insinuates that that's what they're not doing. And believe me when I say, if it weren't for me doing those things all along, I wouldn't be here right now. So don't say anything like that to people. There are times when we do need to be reminded to have faith in God. And we do need to be reminded that God is good and God is gracious and God is there. And those are good things that you can say, but don't say it in a way that's meaning or insinuating that they're not already doing that. We probably are already doing that even more so than what you're doing. And I'm, I'm not trying to judge. I'm just saying there are times that if it weren't for my faith in God and knowing that he is there, I don't know what I would have done. He's my only hope. And there's times when I don't even feel like he is there, but I still pray. I still push through. And I'm sure they are too. So say things instead like, um, you know, I, I know that you're struggling. I'm going to be praying for you. Pray with me. Pray with them. Help them see the good in things. Give them some good scripture to stand on. Send them good positive worship songs that they can rely on to get encouraged. I'll be honest, there's times when I've received videos from loved ones that um, are very encouraging and prayerful and it's very difficult for me to listen to. And sometimes I push them off and don't listen right away. But when I have, it's been very helpful. So do those kinds of things. Send encouraging notes with good scriptures and good things, um, reminding them about the good in life. We need to be reminded. But don't, don't act like we're not already praying and trying to have faith, because we are. Don't tell someone that they're not saved if they're battling depression. I find it very, very heartbreakingly, just, just horrible, I guess, um, and very degrading to me and to other people that deal with mental health issues, that people can be saved and battle with things like, um, you know, heart disease or diabetes, um, eating disorders such as obesity that cause a lot of problems. Um, we can have gossiping, we can have lying and cheating and stealing and be saved and just be, you know, fallen into sin. Yet someone that deals with mental health issues, they can't possibly be saved because, you know, they wouldn't be thinking like that. Um, it, it seems that a lot of people, especially Christians, put mental health into a spiritual category, but all the other elements that we deal with, they're put into a physical category. And honestly, the mind is a physical organ, just like any other part of the body. And while there are times that it is an issue of repentance that keeps us in depression, or there can be times that because we're struggling with something emotional that causes some depression and it's more mental or emotional than physical, it is still a physical issue. Um, majority of the time, it is not simply because of something we need to repent from or that we don't have enough faith. It is chemical imbalances. It's a matter of, um, just the brain itself being just diseased and not working correctly. So don't tell someone they can't be saved if they have depression. Depression can coexist with gratefulness and gratitude. It can coexist in the saved individual, just like diabetes and obesity can. It can coexist in a world where other physical ailments are considered okay for Christians mental health is still a physical ailment. It just manifests differently than the other physical ailments do. So don't do that. What you can say is, you know what? You, you are a new creation in Christ. Your old stuff has been cast away. You're forgiven. You're redeemed. Those are the things I want to hear. And I know those things. And sometimes I need to be reminded of that. Because someone with depression, we go through different periods of rumination where we beat ourselves up for things that we've done wrong in the past, 
or we just focus on the things that we don't succeed in and we beat ourselves up for those things. So we do need to be reminded about the fact that we are new creations in Christ, that we've been forgiven just like anybody else and that God is with us just as much as he's with anybody else struggling with something. That's what you can say. That's what you can do. Don't try to make this a teaching moment. Don't try to make it into something where you're just trying to correct the individual with depression by saying things like, well, as soon as you learn what God's trying to teach you, he'll move you on from this. Or, man, what, what did you do? Where, you know, if you'll just go back to this thing that you didn't do right the first time and redo it the right way, then God will move you on. Again, there might be times when this is because of that, just like any other physical element in our lives could be related to a sinful issue. However, it isn't always, and it, it might not be. So don't come at people like that with depression and, and try to turn it into something where you're trying to correct them or make it about the fact that they're messing up and put that unwarranted and unnecessary burden on them. I've been going through things before when that kind of stuff has been said to me, and I cannot tell you the depth of pain that I dealt with because of that. There were things I've been through that, you know, I couldn't pull myself up out of very well. And to be told something like that made it even worse for me because I felt like I'm doing something wrong. I'm being punished because I'm not learning whatever it is God's trying to teach me or you know, I, I messed up and now I'm going to be punished for the rest of my life. And, you know, honestly, my God's bigger than that. And his forgiveness and his graciousness and mercy are a lot bigger than that. But it's very difficult to see those things. Number one, when you're depressed. And number two, if someone is putting it back on you, that it's all your fault that you're depressed. So don't do things like that. What you can do instead is say things like, I may not understand what you're going through, and I may not understand what's going on right now, but I'm here for you. And if there's something God is wanting to show you through this, I believe that good will come out of it. I do believe that you will see the benefit of that. I do believe that you'll see a good outcome. I do believe that if God wants you to learn something through this journey, that you're going to be even better for it. But don't say it's because I'm not being teachable or humble or receptive that I'm going through something like this. That's not helpful. So don't do that. Don't avoid the person with depression because you don't know what to say or you feel like you, you just don't want to be around them. You don't want to make them worse or you don't know how to act. We're not a plague. We are humans. We're dealing with something. You need to get away from considering it just like a, a mental and emo an emotional issue and treat it like you would any type of other physical disorder. Um, if someone's dealing with another type of physical ailment, do you still hang around them? Do you still go visit them? It's just a different way that we have to be handled sometimes. The best thing that you can do, like I said in the first thing, is offer us support. Be there for us. Encourage us. You know, there's going to be times that I need to get out and go have lunch with a friend. There's going to be times when I need to be kind of pushed to get out of the house and go do stuff. But listen to me when I say that today, I just might need to be home alone. I just mean need to have a little me time. I might need to just go sit in my room and cry. And that's okay. There are times that I might need you just to sit with me. And that's okay too. There's times that the person struggling with depression may need you to just be there. Sit with them in the dark. Let them just cry with you. Sit and watch a movie with them. Talk about your struggles. Talk about where you're at in life. We're not selfish because we're struggling. We're not selfish because we can't seem to pull ourselves up. As a matter of fact, people with depression are typically very caring and we care very deeply. I can't tell you how deeply and how much friends and loved ones and even people I don't know, when they hurt, how much it hurts me and how much I want to fix them. And it hurts me even more when I can't. So share your, share your care, share your concerns, share where you're at in life. Don't avoid us like the plague. Be there with us, be there for us, and let us be there for you. Let us share it in your life. Let us help take care of you too. Just recognize that there's times when taking care of us means letting us be alone, and that's okay. 
One of the last things I want to talk about is hold me accountable. Hold them accountable. There are times in this past couple of years that I wouldn't be here if I hadn't known how much I was going to be missed and how much I was needed. Make sure you say those things to the person struggling with depression. Tell them, I love you. I need you. We care about you. I don't know what life would be like if you weren't around. Tell them the good ways that they make your life better. Tell them the ways that they've impacted you. Also share your concerns about where they're at. I'm concerned for you. I'm worried about you. You seem worse than normal or you seem very isolated. What can I do to help you? There are often times that those of us struggling with really bad depression have plans for suicide. Be honest about those concerns and ask us to be honest with you. Again, it goes back to having a good relationship, having that good solid foundation and that right to speak into someone's life and being a safe place that we can go that isn't going to give condemnation or judgment. I need to know that when I go to that person I'm going to speak with, I'm not going to feel condemned for dealing with what I'm dealing with. Can't always explain why I think and feel the things that I think and feel, but they're still legitimately there. They're still real. I still have to deal with them. So be there, be a safe place, be open and help hold us accountable. I hope this helps. Um, I just want to reiterate the fact that the most important thing you can do for someone that's struggling with depression is go to them in a spirit of love and compassion and care. Don't try to fix. Don't try to correct. Just be there. Be supportive and be open. Be receptive yourself to hearing what we have to say. If you'll really actively listen, you'll hear what we're saying and you'll get some good ways to be able to be supportive and encouraging. If you don't know what to say, don't make something up. Just be there and be honest. Tell us, I I don't know what to say right now, but I love you and I care about you and I'm here. It's the best thing you can do. So I hope that helps. You guys take care and we'll see you next time when I start talking about the traits of depression and um, how to help yourself or someone you love. See you next time.